Hey everybody, welcome to Crack Pack Tuesday number 38 on the Mana League. I'm John as always, and it's time for yet another pack of Battle for Zendikar. These fall sets, they stick around for a fair bit. But of course the spring sets, uh, I think, are going to still spit, stick around for a little bit as well because of the whole new double block, double rotation structure kind of thing. But we only have... Four weeks left of Battle for Zendikar crack -a packs including this week right here, at which point we will then be opening up some Oath of the Gate Watch. But let's open up this pack, see what's in it, and see what we would take pack one, pick one in a draft. Pack took a while to open. All right, up first we've got a blister pod, a single green mana for a 1-1. One, one. It's devoid, and when it dies, it makes a 1-1, one, one, but that 1-1 one, one is a scion, so it taps for mana. These are interesting little guys. I think they're fine. I don't think you want to load up on them exactly. Maybe one is fine. Two if you're really lacking playables. But of course it's in green, and we don't like green, do we? We need extraordinarily good reasons to go into green. That means super awesome balmy green rares, and also clear signals that green is super duper open. Blister Pod is part of none of those. Don't first pick this. Don't first pick it. Next up, we've got an Anticipate, also not first pickable, however significantly more playable. One in a blue to look at the top three cards of your library. Take one, put it in your hand, and put the other two on the bottom of your library at instant speed. So you get to hold up mana, pretend you have a spell shrivel or a horribly awry, and then say, ha ha ha, Anticipate. Uh, good card. It's a good card draw. It, it helps you dig for whatever you need. If you need that counter spell or that removal or that land or that creature, it helps you get there. Uh, not first pickable in any way, shape, or form, but totally playable. Next up, we have Sludgy. Sludge Crawler, a single black mana for a Devoid Ingest 1-1 one, one, where you can pay two generic mana to give it plus one, plus one until end of turn. These guys are surprisingly good. They're, they're not amazing. You don't first pick these and you don't load up on these, although that could maybe be a deck. Um, it's almost like the shell game. I'm attacking with three. Which one do you block? Aha, I pump the other one. Um... It's just an efficient creature, and it does really fuel the blue-black processor's deck. Not quite as well as a, a mist uh, intruder or something like that, but still pretty solid. Not first pickable, though. Next up, we've got Earthen Arms. Earthen Arms is a, a one and a green for what is essentially an aura. Uh, put two plus one plus one counters on target permanent. However, you could pay six and a green to awaken a land and make it a four four, along with two plus one plus one counters on some other permanent. Uh, or sorry, it's on the permanent, so you could actually put it on the land that is going to then become a creature. Um, not good. Just not good. Uh, as I said, it is basically an aura. It is basically an aura that says target creature gets plus two plus two so whatever aura that is from the history of magic and sometimes it's a seven mana six six vanilla you would never play a seven mana six six don't play earth and arms it's just not good and it's in green and it's totally not first pickable so out of the uh the first pick pile it goes Next up, we have Belligerent Whiptail. It's three and a red for a 4-2 creature worm. Landfall, it gets first strike. Um, not great. Not great. 4-2 is bad stats, and it's only going to get first strike on the offense 99% of the time. So it's not even a good blocker, and it's not a good offense because most things will kill it if it doesn't have that vital first strike. Um, if this was two and a red, maybe... But I don't know if it would be a 4-2 at 2 and a red. Uh, it'd probably be more of a 3-2. Uh, yeah, this thing just dies so much. And it dies to a lot of removal and stuff like that. An out number for 2 kills this. Uh, uh, tons of stuff kills this. Uh, not great. Not first pickable. Play better stuff if you can. Next up, we've got a Stonehaven Medic. One and a white for a uh, creature core cleric. Pay a white, tap it, and you gain a life. And it's a 1-3. I can't remember if I said that. Uh, not a good card, but if you ha if you are the life gain deck, uh, and if you specifically have things like uh, Serene Steward or Malakir Familiar or Narcana Assassin, this can actually do a little bit of work. So if you're going down that route and you have those cards, yeah, pick this guy up. Absolutely. But don't first pick him. Don't take him as the plan to go into the lifelink deck because uh, you may just not see those on commons that you really, really need. Um, however, I can't even begin to say the number of times that I have caught people by attacking with a Nirkana Assassin and them going, I don't think you have any combat tricks. I'll block it. 
and me tapping my Stonehaven medic and surprise death touch. Uh, I've actually caught people, multiple people, multiple times in the same match. Uh, cool little card, good interactions, but you need the other pieces first. Next up, we have a first pickable-ish card, but I would prefer not to be first picking this. Benthic Infiltrator, two and a blue for a 1-4 Devoid Ingest uh, that cannot be blocked. Um, yeah, this isn't going to kill your opponent. It, it could in a truly grindy game. Uh, it can finish opponents off, but its key, 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 key skill is that Ingest, that and add on blockable not speed, but being unblockable. Um, this is really going to power your blue-black ingest decks or your blue X ingest decks. If you need processing, this is what's going to give you that processing uh, uh, fuel. I don't want to first pick it, but it could be first pickable, especially the way this pack has been going so far. So uh, into the first pick pile, but hopefully we don't see it again at the end. Touch of the Void, that's better than Benthic Infiltrator. Two and a red for a Devoid uh, spell, sorcery, and uh, Touch of the Void deals three damage to target creature or player. Very important. I've seen so many people not realize that. Um, and if the creature that it kills would die this turn in any way, shape, or form, if it dies from Touch of the Void or if it dies later, uh, you exile it instead, so it fuels your processors as well. Uh, super solid removal. It could only be better by being instant speed, but even at sorcery, I'll take it. Next up, we've got Shadow Glider. Shadow Glider is two and a white for a flying 2-2. Two -two. End of story. Surprisingly good. Blue-white Flyers is a very, very, very viable deck, and this is one of kind of the workhorses of that deck. It's not one of the splashy bombs that's going to win you the game, but it's going to do a lot of work. And in most white decks, it's just totally fine as well. It's not an ally, unfortunately. The allies are on the ground. The flying ones don't really care about their friends on the ground. Uh, they're too busy flying around, gliding on things. But, hey, totally fine card. Not first pickable, but... Uh, uh, totally playable. Next up, we've got Stone Fury. Stone Fury is a three red red instant spell that deals damage to our creature, not for player, just to creature, equal to the number of lands that you have. So presumably this is for five damage. You could ramp into it or something and do it for four damage. And sometimes it's for something ridiculous like eight or ten. Um, a good card. If you're in red and you see this come around, yeah, take one. I don't really like them in multiples because they are expensive. They are double red. But uh, it's going to kill something. It's going to kill something, uh, you know, the vast majority of the time. So I'm pretty happy to see it. I just don't really want to first pick it. It's not quite efficient enough. It's no touch of the void, that's for sure. On to the uncommons, we've got a Coombe Stone Waker. A Coombe Stone Waker is a 1 and a red for a 2-1 landfall. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay 2 and a red to make a 3-1 elemental creature token that has haste and disappears at the end of the turn. Um, this thing's fine-ish. You really don't develop your board with it, which sucks. You can get in some early damage, but early damage isn't quite as valuable as just establishing your board. So I don't often like to take this guy that highly. If I'm in red, if I'm really digging for a two drop, yeah, I'll take it and I'll probably play it. And some games, you know, if I don't have a three drop, yeah, I'll make a three one, swing in with it, not establish my board, but I'm not establishing my board because I can't. If I had a three drop and if it was in any way, shape or form comparable to a three one that's going to disappear, I'll just play my three drop. Um, so be careful with the Coombe Stone Waker. It, it's not amazing, but it is fine, but not first pickable. Next up, we've got Blighted Cataract. Blighted Cataract is a land that taps to add one colorless mana to your mana pool or diamond or whatever it is that we're going to call it. I hope we just say colorless to keep it kind of uh, uh, clear what's happening. But you can also pay five generic and a blue to tap it and sack Blighted Cataract to draw two cards. As I've said week in, week out on Crack Pack Tuesday for Battle for Zendikar, I like the Blighted Lands. They're good. They're going to tap for a bunch of mana, and then when you don't need them anymore, they're going to do a pretty decent effect. Um, I don't quite know where I rank them exactly. I haven't done a fully ranked list. Blighted Cataract is not at the top but it is fine, and it does what most blue decks want to do. It doesn't quite fit into maybe blue-white flyers, uh, but it really fits into blue-black. It, it fairly fits into blue-red. Um, yeah, Blighted Lands are fine. You're not going to first pick them ever, but they are fine. 
Our final uncommon is Retreat to Ameria. Retreat to Ameria is a three and a white for an enchantment. It has landfall. When you play a land, you get a 1-1 one, one core ally, which triggers all of your other rally uh, triggers, or all of your creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn. This is really handy paired up with a couple of Clastria healers because then you're getting a 1-1 one, one and draining too. Um, it's good with any other sort of ally triggers. You kind of know if you want this. I wouldn't take this to go into the ally deck though. In a weak pack, I would consider first picking it, but I kind of want this when I know that I want allies because outside of that, it's not that great. This is, you know, significantly less good in the blue-white flyers deck. In the blue-white flyers deck, you're probably going to be using the plus one, plus one more often. Um, but yeah, I'm just not a big fan of this card outside of kind of the red-white allies deck and maybe the black-white uh, life gain, assuming you're heavy on the Calastria healers. Otherwise, eh, uh, not first pickable though, not for me. Our rare is Hero of Goma Fada, four and a white for a human knight ally. It's got a rally trigger. Whenever it or an ally enters the battlefield, all of your creatures get indestructible. Pretty solid card, does a lot of good. Uh, it lets you attack in with basically impunity. Um, pretty happy to have this card most of the time. I don't know if I would first pick it over everything, however, and we'll have to have that discussion in a couple of seconds. Um, but I would first pick it a fair bit of the time. We also have a swamp and we have a plant. No expedition. So we're looking at Hero of Goma Fada, as I just said. We're also looking at Mr. Benthic Infiltrator, and we're looking at Touch of the Void. As I said, Benthic does not beat Touch of the Void. The question is, does Touch of the Void beat Hero of Goma Fada? Uh, I think it does. I think it does. Hero of Goma Fada being a five drop means that it is ever so slightly co costly in your usual sort of red white allied deck. However, it does kind of act as your curve topper and it does an incredible effect. I am not bad mouthing Hero of Goma Fada. I think it is first pickable in a lot of cases. However, I think Touch of the Void is just significantly better. Yes, if you take this and you go red, you might end up in red-white and probably wished you had that Hero of Goma Fada, which is not going to wheel. But you may also end up in red-blue, you may also end up in red-black. There are options out there. Maybe you even end up in red-green, who knows. But Touch of the Void goes in every single red deck, and you're always going to be happy to have it, so I'm pretty happy to first pick Touch of the Void. Let me know what you would have taken in the comments down below. Would you have taken Touch of the Void? Would you have taken Hero of Goma Fada, Benthic Infiltrator, The Retreat, or something else? Let me know. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at The Mana League. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash The Mana League. You've already found me here on YouTube. Please make use of that comment section down below. As I said, I love interacting with you guys and seeing you interact with each other. If you enjoy my videos, please like and subscribe. That way you can stay up to date on all the latest videos. We are just a few weeks away from set reviews. You want to know as soon as those set reviews pop up, so make sure you do subscribe. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.